So, honey, since we've been married, you've told me a lot of stories about your childhood, and every one of them has intrigued me. <laughs> I wish I could have been there with you and grown up with you, had the fun that you've had as a kid. And the hard times, I wish I could have been there with you to go through the hard times. <laughs> but one of the stories that you shared with me some time ago is a story about Disneyland before it was. And I'm just wondering if you would share that story with our audience this morning. Well, um, what I recall, because I was between 10 and 12 years old, is I was sitting in the back seat of my mom's car, and I think it was one of my older sisters that was sitting in the front. And uh, we were driving down Harbor Boulevard, Harbor Boulevard, and we we're going north. And my mom said, look over there, you guys, that's the parcel of land that's been designated for Disneyland. And I remember saying, what's Disneyland? And they said, well, that's going to be a new place that's going to be built for fun and entertainment for families. And I remember looking over there and just seeing nothing but masses of orange groves mm. and thinking, hmm, how can this be, you know? Really? So that's what I recall. So after you telling me that story, I actually looked up on the internet and found a picture oh, neat. of what that land probably looked like in about 1953, which was a couple of years before Disneyland was built. I'm going to pull that up on the screen for everybody so they can they can see that. So you're saying that all of that land out there was pretty much orange groves, and that's what it looks like right now uh -huh. in that picture. You can't see it up close, but it looks like groves of trees. Yeah. And so that's that's what you saw. Yep. So I interesting. Did. So so. Another question I have, and you've told me stories of this too, is did you ever work at Disneyland? I did. I worked there from when I was 16 through, I think, till I was like 19 or maybe going on 20. I actually worked there um, my senior year in high school and um, then on for my college years. I used that for income. Okay. And did you ever get to meet Walt Disney? I did meet Walt Disney. He was on the street and we were told to keep him moving, to just shake his hand and keep him moving so that the guests would just not overwhelm him. And I understand that there were some rules for the employees about how they were to behave while they are on duty as far as their disposition was concerned. Yes. It's where I learned about customer service because you were only supposed to be super friendly and smiling and gracious to all the guests and never anybody was ever to be contentious or anything. Uh, where did you work at Disneyland? Okay, my first job, I worked in three different locations. My first job was at Carnation Land on Main Street I think that's still there. I'm not sure. And um, I worked there as a what they called a hostess. You just took orders. You didn't make anything. You just delivered them to the tables. Mm -hmm. And you were. They had spot checkers to make sure everyone was friendly and nice. But it was very fun. I can remember having such a good time working there. It was mm -hmm. very fun. And and then my second job was at a candle, um, it was called a candle shop, and it no longer exists and haven't for 25 years or more. But um, it was between the Emporium and the clock shop, and um, I can remember having a difficulty because there was so much fragrance in oh, that yeah, room. I, bet. I remember standing out front a lot of times <laughs> waiting for people to come in and be friendly to them, but oh, it was yeah. terribly fragrant. <laughs> <laughs> you also told me about an occasion where some people from, I think they, you said they were from Japan, 
had come over and they were purchasing. And tell me about that story. Okay, so my third job was at the Emporium. And that's where I worked the continuation of my time at Disneyland. And I worked as a, as a clerk there and it was a, a, a small store that they basically had for, you know, different clothing that was Disneyland oriented and everything. But um, people would come and they would bring your, their wares up to the cashier stand and I would, you know, put their numbers into the cashier and everything. And they did not know the currency at all. And so they would just hand me, they would just put their money in their hand and just hand it to me. And I would pick out the amount of money that they needed to give. So there was a lot of honesty that needed to be going into that job because people just weren't aware of the currency at all. Yeah, and there was a lot of trust that they put in you when they did that. Oh yeah, I mean, but everyone was so kind. I never had anyone that was contentious or irritable or anything. That was a world all its own. And that's what I was going to ask you. Was Disneyland at that time, at least, a place where people could go and find only happy? Absolutely. That was one of the, uh, in their initial interview, they wanted to let you know you had to have the kind of disposition that was friendly and outgoing and, you know, kind to people because they wanted to portray a not a realistic picture, but they wanted the best picture they could portray of humanity there. It was supposed to be magical and fun wow. and enjoyable for everyone. And isn't that what Disneyland has always been? Magical, like I know the uh, the uh, park that, that Disney uh, built in Orlando, Florida is actually called uh, Magic Kingdom. And um, in a sense, Disneyland is the same, a magic place where people can go and their imaginations can go wild and they can be in a friendly place where everything is good and light and wonderful and escape real life and <laughs> leave it outside the gate. Yes, yes, that's so true. Well, I wish I could have known you then. I, <laughs> I love you so much, Sammy. and. Uh, you have carried with you into our relationship all those sweet traits of graciousness and warmth and courtesy and honesty. And I just want Thank our you. church family to know that there is a place where we can go even today where those conditions exist. There is a place. And that's what I want to talk about this morning when we actually uh, get more into the sermon today. So Sounds thank you so much, my love, for sharing this experience with me first and now with those who are listening. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. <laughs>